Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, it is Thursday afternoon. A couple hours from now, we'll end up having the Seattle Seahawks going against the Rams, Russell Wilson versus Matthew Stafford. I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks, even though they are two and a half point underdogs. In fact, we'll be live streaming tonight during the game and we'll start out actually at 7 45 with my buddy uh stuart morrison we'll actually have our pick segment tonight uh we started that last night but unfortunately we didn't have brother Roz, who's taking care of some business and stuff but we're going to go ahead and get our picks in tonight before the game and uh we'll go from there so 7 45 tonight be sure to check out the channel and let me thank all of you guys that are mvps out there we are at 39,938 subscribers. Um, last week, I was about 900 away, and I thought it would be a pipe dream to be able to reach that by my birthday, which is on Sunday, and that would be the best birthday present that I could ever have to get to that milestone of 40,000. So shout out to you. We're 62 away, and hopefully we can get there uh, by then. The Dallas Cowboys get ready to take on the New New York Stinking Giants, as I'm sure you've heard that you know somebody's out there, you know, calling out Mark Holmes. This, this is literally their Super Bowl because he knows his team is ass. And I'll get to him a little bit later because you know what, I have no problem making him wait. You know, I, I, in fact, I love the attention that he's giving me, and hoping and praying that I'll respond. Pizzle. <laughs> are you enjoying it buddy are you enjoying it yeah well i'll get to you later so the cowboys this game is a measuring stick and this game is who might be even spiritual you got to take care of your division first thing you got to be able to do that we did that with the eagles and, and that's something the cowboys have always done really really well but this game more than anything else it was October 11th last year against the Giants that the Dallas Cowboys saw their season go down the toilet when Dak Prescott's foot got broken. Um, listening to Dak, he was talking about watching the film and stuff. He was like, I just turned my head, you know, when, when the accident happened. And, and self-deprecating himself and saying, I don't know what I was thinking when I was trying to put it back together. You know, which is kind of like, ooh, when, when you just think about that, you just kind of get that, ooh, that queasy feeling from it because that was gruesome. And for Dak to come back to being where he is right now, it's it's amazing and it's truly a blessing that we do have him back at full strength. So this game, mentally playing against the Giants, playing against Jason Garrett and Joe Judge and things, Joe G Judge, who's literally saying playing against the Cowboys offense is like, you know, it's like uh, you spin the chamber, it's just another bullet's going to come out from another one of them because they have so many weapons. Dak said this today on Kellen Moore. He's finding the weak spots in defenses and attacking them. He's finding different ways to get us all involved using our strengths. Y'all haven't seen it all, and I don't know if you'll ever see it all because his mind's always rolling. We're not going to try and throw just to throw. It's because we want to throw it and to be the hot hand um, and have a lot of passing yards. If you're going to allow us to run, we'll impose our will with the way we're running the plays we're calling the style just being who we are so basically they're saying pick your poison you decide which way you want to die and this works great and this is where you can look back at Narv turner when he was here at the cowboys he could do the same thing because when you've got a great offensive line and weapons most things will work you can find places where they can't cover and it all comes down to four things in winning the Cowboys great teams have all had a great running back great great quarterback now there I say also wide receiver actually five things a great defense and the great walls of Dallas whether you go through the 70s go through the 90s that's when the Cowboys have succeeded because everything starts from an offensive line and I'm, I'm beginning to feel like this is the best offensive line right now we've had since 2016. We've been fooled over the years where they've always said, oh, well, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, great offense, best offensive line in football. That was true in 2016, but since that time, it has not been there. 
It has not. In fact, last year was pretty much rock bottom. But right now, you look at the Cowboys, and we kind of have a problem on the offensive line. And that problem is we've got great players that are going to be sitting on the bench. I think part of the reason why Lyle Collins ended up you know, trying to do this lawsuit was he's worried about being a starter when he comes back. When you see Terrence Steele, you know, a lot of people thought was Ten Foil. No, he's a man of steel. You see him playing the last three games in Lyle Collins' spot. You say, okay, that guy's good. When you saw Connor McGovern stepping in for Zach Martin, all pro guard, and playing really well, you say, okay, that guy can ball. It's conceivable that those two guys who should be starters on other teams are going to be on the bench. That's something we haven't had in a long time. That's where you, you say, okay, if we lose somebody, which we have every week except for the first week, you don't feel quite as bad. Actually, no, we did. We've actually lost an offensive lineman every week. I forgot. Zach Martin was out the first week. And um, then, of course, Lyle Collins has been gone the, le- the next three. You're not feeling quite as bad. And I think about what Jimmy Johnson said. This, this video may get a little bit long, and I apologize for it, but th- there's a point to all of this. Jimmy Johnson pointed out, you know, the Cowboys, everybody thinks it was just the Herschel Walker trade that made the Cowboys great, which it did. It helped get a lot of picks. But that offensive line was not built through the draft. It was free agents. It was converting guys from one position to another. Uh, You know, it was taking a defensive lineman and making him a tackle. I want to play this clip because I think it's very important to understand where you've been to understand where you're going. And so, Jimmy, take it away. You're up, and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out (laughs) and go fishing with you. (laughs) But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly (laughs) disgusting to watch. (laughs) Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he, he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St- uh, Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh-round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third-round pick, Eric Williams, at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much on that. 
I'll follow up about Charles Haley. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but here's the thing that's interesting when you start listening to this. So it wasn't that they got all number one picks and stuff. You heard them take a defensive tackle, Mark Tuane, and make him an offensive tackle. You heard about you know Mark Spignowski, who was an undersized guard. They made him center. They ended up taking a guy that nobody you know wanted because they said he was too fat in Nate Newton and ended up making him a great guard. And that's kind of the story that you have right now with Terrence Steele, an undrafted rookie free agent that you brought in who that first year, you know, listen, all y'all were ready to push him over the bridge. Now, I want you to take a look here. You know, I, I, this, this, is, this is amazing right here, okay? Okay, so what I want you to notice here, and let, let me back this up a little bit here, sorry. What I want you to notice here is this play... And it, it, I slow it down, don't worry. This play is actually a bootleg. What they're doing is everybody is going to the left. You've got Tony Pollard here going uh, like it's going to be a dive. you got Dak Prescott, who's got the ball on his hip, has his hand out here to influence the defense. He's going to fake it, and he's going to loop around and carry on the outside. This gets the flow all over the place. Terrence Steele is right here. That's his guy. And what you're going to see is, you're going to see him flying. Let's go. Boom. Did you see that? He's now right here. Right there. Yeah. Now, keep watching the play, and you'll see. Watch this. Now, in slow motion, he takes... Do you see that? Did you see that? He took his right hand and literally threw him aside. That's Eric William-esque. Okay, that is a little bit of nasty. That's Tyron Smith, who when Tyrannosaurus is just taking one arm and I'm just kicking your ass right on through here. Watch this again up close. I, I love this. Okay. Right here. You see him? 78. Steps inside, takes that big hand, and he launches his ass. Look at this. Get the hell out of here. Take out the trash. Guys, that's freaking amazing. Watch it one more time. Watch this. Boom. Look at that. Throw his ass. Boom. Look at that. Oh, my God. I love that. I, don't you love that? Look at this shit. Look at this. Move it. Get out the way. Get out the way, fans. Get out the way. Move it. Get out the way. Yeah. This is becoming the Great Wall of Dallas 3 this year. And that's why Zeke Elliott ends up being the ground player of the week because they're pounding hope and holes right there. Dak Prescott has not got people breathing down his throat. He is able to make his moves, uh, be able to read the defenses, and the defenses are confounded. This is incredible. And with this game being such an emotional game, where we've got Dak Prescott coming back from, of course, injury, going against, of course, the Giants, the team that he went out on. I feel like this offensive line has made it their mission that they are going to protect Dak Prescott or, or die trying, that they're giving everything to make sure that he does not get hurt. And I'm going to tell you, this offensive line, they're beginning to get a little bit of streak of nasty in them. And they are literally just blowing people away. And the fact that we still have Lyle Collins coming back, that we've got Connor McGovern sitting over there, and even Ty Naseki, you know, another guy who's been a starter, this offensive line is ready to rock and roll and can withstand some different issues if they come up. And so I, I, I'm enjoying seeing the play out of our offensive line. Next time, we'll be talking about the defensive line and the improvements that they've made. In the meantime, you know how we roll. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. We'll see you soon.